Right. Hello, I'm Steve Venner. I'm G0TAN and I provide technical and engineering support to Martin Lynch & Sons here in Chertsey. Today I'm going to talk to you about Yesu's latest offering, uh, the FTDX1200. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about what it can do, um, how easy it is to operate and uh, what a wonderful little radio it is in general. So the FTDX1200 is the latest offering from Yesu and it's designed for the casual operator but it can also be used in contesting, chasing DX and given its size for portable operation. It produces 100 watts on uh, SSB, FM, CW. Um, on FM and AM modes you can also have the um, wide and narrow modes, wide and narrow filters uh, selectable. So TX coverage on the amateur bands is from 160 meters all the way up to 6 meters. It also includes the new 5 meg band as standard from uh, the uh, UK, for the UK. The general receive coverage is all the way from 30 kilohertz all the way up to 56 megahertz, so it's quite wide. It has a great color display and that's really useful for when you're um, working your way through the numerous menu options which you can set up on this radio. So now what I'd like to do is show you how easy the unit is to operate. Uh, we start off with the basic functionality of the radio. We start off obviously with a power switch at the top left hand side. We have the tune button for the internal ATU. Uh, front key jack, there's also a key jack on the rear panel and the headphone jack. And down here is a standard Yesu uh, microphone, 8-pin microphone socket. On the display unit, uh, we have uh, down the left-hand side, we have the controls which control the antenna, which antenna you want to use, whether it's antenna 1 or antenna 2. The IPO um, optimization, the attenuation, the roofing filter selection, noise blanker and the AGC. Okay, all the buttons down the left hand side relate to this row of icons on the main display. So you can see if we were to change the antenna, we're currently set at antenna 1. If I press it, it goes over to antenna 2. I don't know whether you can see that in the video, but uh, for now we leave it at antenna 1. And the same, every time you change one of these buttons, you'll see the appropriate icon change here. So for instance, the roofing filters, you can go from 3 kilohertz up to... 6 kilohertz up to 15 kilohertz and then back to default to 3 kilohertz. Okay. Below this row of icons on the display you have the frequently accessed menu options uh, and they are navigated via the keypad here, this uh, up and down and left and right. So at the moment we've got the uh, analog style meter set to power output. If uh, it's selected because it's highlighted in blue what we can do is if we press the select button it'll change to ALC change to SWR if you want to look at that, uh, compression, uh, drain current, drain voltage and back to power output. And if you want to change something else, if you want to switch the uh, processing on for instance, you can just navigate across to that and then press the select button. And now there's no processing on, that's because we're in CW mode. The mode button um, is over here and it's a sequential one so it goes cycles through all the various modes. So if we want to go to USB, uh, LSB, we have that. Um, now we should be able to set the processor on and off. So it was a very brief in introduction to some of the features that are highlighted on the display. Uh, along the bottom we have various controls, four controls. Uh, they're doubled up. So the back one, back knob, is the mic, uh, is the processor level, if you've switched the processor on. Okay, and then the front knob controls the mic gain or the speed if you're in CW mode. The next one is the uh, your audio contour, which we haven't selected yet, which we have to select so that it comes on on the display. And now we can sort of change the contour, received audio con contour, uh, audio peak filtering. Uh, you can also do the notch, uh, select the notch here, and now you can change the notch position. To what you want it. 
this is your IF width, bandwidth, and the IF shift position. As you can see, the little icons on the display will change appropriately. The um, last control here is the RF gain and squelch control if you if you need it, um, and the obviously the volume control. Um, if you're in CW mode, you have uh, the braking button here, which switches between semi-braking and full braking. So that's the basic um, options here. On the display itself, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that in a minute and show you some of the neat features that we have. Um, I'll just turn it down a bit so that uh, we can hear ourselves think. On the right of the, the radio, you have the main tuning VFO, and below that to the right, you have either the clarifier or the various menu options, select functions, clarifier, um, and if you have memories enabled, you can change the memory grouping, things like that. So that's what that's used for. Top right hand side, you have the various bands 1.8 megs all the way down to 6 meters, 50 megs. Uh, and then there's a the standard Yesu A to B, A swapping A and B, store and recall, uh, narrow filter button. And if you're working split, you have your TX uh, transmission frequency. The, the CS button um, is a button which is programmable by you. So if you want to access something which is in the menu structure, the menu structure I'm going to talk about in a while, it's quite uh, in, in extensive. So you might want to have something a quick set so you can just press the CS button and it'll take you straight to that particular menu. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a short while. Uh, above the main VFO, we just have the transmit and receive, or oh, sorry, receive and transmit. Uh, icon so we're both not in split mode. If I was to split we can see that the transmit frequency goes over to whatever VFO B is set to and it's currently set at 7 megs. Okay so I'll take split off. So that was uh, a quick overview of the front panel features. What I'm going to do now is concentrate on the main display uh, and show you what other options are available. This is the standard display that we have at the moment and it shows you the frequency, uh, signal receive signal strength, uh, various options for the uh, audio peak filtering, the notch, things like that. Uh, again, it shows you the, uh, the options that you can control from the left hand buttons and the quick or frequently accessed menu options. Now, what you can do with this is change the display type. So if you press the scope button up here, you will see it now shows you the uh, spectrum scope display. And when you press it and select it the first time, it will just do one scan. Okay, and you can hear uh, maybe something going on there. If you want it continuous scan, you press the auto button and it continually scans. The audio goes away and you can see just there that CW station that we're just listening to. Okay, if you want it to go back, come out of there, you can't hear anything while that's scanning, just press that again. So that's option number one. If you press the scope button again, you get the same thing, but it's a full size screen. And again, again, if you press and hold the uh, auto button, you can uh, see what other stations are around. You can, by going into the menu system, which I'm going to talk to you about in a short while, you can change the bandwidth and the center frequency, uh, whatever you want to set that to. So we take that. The next option is my favorite, is this one here. You get the band scope and you get the FFT display down here. As I said earlier, this unit actually has the FFT unit installed. And there you can monitor the received audio, you can monitor the TX audio, and there are some little markers on there which will allow you to do things like CW decoding. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about next. Uh, we've got this station on here in the background. You can see uh, if I tune the main tuning dial, you can see I'm going off down here. There's two things to help you when you're in CW mode. One is this point here it's in the center of the pass band, and, and there's a little tuning indicator up here. And if you get that set to the center, uh, you can do that in your spot on frequency. Now, if you press and hold the scope button while you're in this mode, it will actually start decoding Morse code for you. So, we can do that. We also have the ability in a similar fashion to also decode RITI signals and PSK31. All is standard, uh, assuming that you have the uh, FFT board fitted. But uh, that's um, the, a really neat feature. Um, so there you go. All right, so that's enough of that. Oops, press and hold the scope button. 
and we're back to there again. So that's the basic uh, operation of the display. It is really, really easy to use and it is so useful having this information available. Uh, it makes, makes operating very, very easy indeed. Okay, so that was a, a brief overview of what you can do with the display, what functions and features are available to you. What I'm going to do now is just go through the very, very quickly the menu function. Um, like with most modern radios, the menu functions, uh, menu facilities are quite extensive. The good thing, the really good thing about the, the FTDX1200 is that there's a lot of them, but you can see down here, they're actually grouped together. Um, we can go all the way up, if I turn the clarifier knob, we can go all the way up to about 190 different menu options. Um, and it, then it starts off again with one. But as I said, they're, they're grouped together. And all the options in this menu, I would tend to say, are very rarely accessed. You can play about with them. You can set them up for your personal tastes and things like that. You can set your audio bandwidth, your receive bandwidth, how you want the display. You can have a bar graph here rather than a traditional analog. But once you set those things, they tend to be st stay set. The only one that I would say is tend to be or tends to be accessed quite frequently is the actual RF power level. And this has actually been commented on for this radio and for the FTDX3000. It's exactly the same. Um, to change the power level, you do have to go through the menu system. Having said that, there is a very easy way around to control that. I'm going to go all the way up through and we get to the TX General section, which is about 150 something, I think. So basically, where are we? Scope, 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 scope. Come on, keep going, tuning, TX Audio. There'll be one here, TX General. There we go. So it's 177 currently. And it says there TX Max Power 100 watts. So if you want to change that, you have to press select and then you change it with the clarifier knob to go down to about, well, I think the minimum is 5 watts. But anywhere in between, you can set that to. So if you're driving linear amplifiers, things like that, you might want to reduce the power. But you don't want to have to go through that menu option each time. So it's, it's not difficult, but it is a little bit more involved than just having a knob on the front of the radio. So what you can do is you can use this CS button, which is what I mentioned earlier on. So whichever quick set that you want to go to, if you want, to, if you didn't want TX power, if you wanted something else, so you'll change that frequently. I'm just going to use it as TX power. Say we're going to set that there. Just press the CS button and then press the menu. That's it set. So now what you can do, any time you want to go through the power, uh, change the power, you just press the CS button. It takes you straight back there. You select it turn it down to whatever you want, select it again, and you're done. And that's it, simple as that. So basically, it, it is really simple to operate. Uh, what I would say is, like all modern radios, take the handbook, when you get the radio, have a quick play with it, but then to get the best out of it, go and make yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, or something a bit stronger. Go and put your feet up by the fireside and start reading through the book. It does really help you understand what the radio is about and to get the max maximum benefit out of it. Um, I'm going to say it is a great little radio. It really is nice radio, but it does take a little bit of learning, uh, but not too much. Um, and once you get used to it, it's really, really easy to use. So there you have it. OK, so that was a very brief uh, tour, guided tour of Yesu's latest uh, radio, the FTDX1200. Great little radio, really is super. Uh, with all the features and functionality and its performance, I honestly say there is really nothing that uh, can touch it. Okay, thank you, and thank you for watching.